Good morning, everyone. This is Otsukimi, Observations with Otsu. Glad that you're here. We got a lot to discuss today. As you can see, the markets are looking really, really good today. Um, I kind of told you so. I've been kind of saying this for the past couple weeks now. We'll get into that. We'll kind of see what happened to, to get to where we are now. Um, I don't want to get into it now because you guys know my rants and how I operate with that. So... We'll discuss that. So we got a lot, a lot of things to discuss on the price action side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Especially with uh, Binance, or uh, especially with Bitcoin, but also with Binance. And so that's the other side, right? Um, it's already on my mind. The Binance stuff with the SEC. So we got some news-based things to discover as well. I personally don't think they're as big of a deal, but I'm going to discuss them anyway, especially as we get closer um, to this happening, because it's probably going to be in about two hours now when that meeting starts so we'll see how that plays into all of this as you guys also know if you're familiar with observations videos i typically have a topic at hand um, that i discuss with it and so the topic i want to talk about it was easy for me to mention maybe like the sec news based things but i've already kind of covered that before in previous videos about how we shouldn't really look at the news and here's why and honestly it's kind of redundant and it's kind of boring for me but I, today I'm going to talk about suckers rallies instead. And so there's a lot of, uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion and um, a lot of watering down of, of thought and ideas about how like stages work in a market. And for the most part, like things like the Wall Street cheat sheet get used quite a bit. And so I don't necessarily believe that they should be used like literally. Um, and that I think that's a big mistake that people people do. But the last stage in the Wall Street cheat sheet is um, this is just a sucker's rally. And I wanted to talk about that because I've seen a few things about that recently. Um, people still believe that we are in other stages. I, I Some people you know, believe that we are in an anger stage, depression stage. I even seen one like last month that said that we're in the complacency stage. Like, okay, that means we have like a two-year bear market ongoing so we'll discuss all of that okay and so i'll probably do that preemptively um in, in a section here but then i'm going to keep going into different stages of that suckers rally idea um with bitcoin ethereum solana and binance so as i talk about the top four of these six i'm going to mention parts of those so <clears throat> to kind of backtrack, I do believe that we are in the final stage of the Wall Street cheat sheet kind of mentality. Okay, I I, I do think the anger stage is over. I I, I think I absolutely absolutely think the capitulation stage is over. Um, you know, and a lot of people were saying that we were still capitulating like earlier this year. Okay, I mean we're up for the year, so I don't know what I don't know what world people are in with that, right? So, but. There's a lot of confusion, and most of the time, people try to perceive what they want to see out of the market, and that's the mistake, okay? You have to understand what might be going on in the market, because when you get to the very last stage, the disbelief stage, you can't view the disbelief stage from your own mindset. <clears throat> Otherwise, it'll never be a disbelief stage. The whole idea of the disbelief stage is you understanding, which is the suckers rally stage. Um, the suckers rallies are not disbelief state. I'll get into that. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll pause the whole thing and we'll go into that in the next section because it'll, it'll get confusing. So that's the topic at hand. So the four different things. So I'm going to talk about that maybe about five, ten minutes. And then as we analyze Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, X, or uh, Binance, we'll discuss four additional things about suckers rallies and disbelief stages. And so when I'm, <clears throat> when I'm talking about um, Bitcoin analysis, I'll just mention the definition of a suckers rally. We'll just go into that. Just, just basic definitions in, in the de definition of a disbelief stage. Then we'll go into that while I discuss um, Ethereum. I actually put ETC for some reason on my notes. But for Ethereum, we're going to discuss understanding how suckers rallies work and how the Wall Street cheat sheet should work. Um, and then when we get to Solana, I'll discuss how 
um, disbelief stages in general should work as far as like psychologically how how they operate and how they can be confusing to you I um, mean then and then when we get to B and B we're going to talk about um com combating the expectations of suckers rallies and disbelief stages and that that's a pretty big key because the biggest thing about a disbelief rally is that nobody believes it's actually bullish as well as it is and I, and honestly that's a perfect definition for this year nobody believes that we should be this bullish it, it's crazy to me um but we are like we're we're doing really good we have a good green day today when everybody everybody and their mom thought we were going down further you know i discussed a fake out last week a crystal clear fake out that everybody can see right here on the chart so there's a lot of like i don't believe this i don't believe this i don't believe this and it's it's the textbook definition of a disbelief stage and so this is why i think we're here so so the the isolated time today when i talk about suckers rallies and disbelief stages is going to be partly me trying to convince you that this is a disbelief stage so we'll get into that um i'll try to get some alts but i feel like i'll probably be short on time with that so we'll we'll see i want to get this done um in an hour before editing so we'll see how that goes because i want to get this out before the hearing so we'll we'll take a look i think this will be fun <clears throat> Um, come and go as you will because this might be a longer video and let's just get started so i actually did forget about some preliminary things i'm going to have two things um and it's things i've mentioned before Aaron pro bots are coming this is going to be in my nowhere discord i'm going to head go ahead and just put the bots into my discord i thought about switching between discord and telegram i'm just going to put them in with my my current nowhere discord group in addition to that i also going to have nowhere premium i'm going to restart that because I think I have enough people interested. And so that's going to be another thing added on to my Nowhere Discord. So if you're interested in any extra things that I do, um, go to my Discord. And you'll be able to see that probably by the end of this month. Um, my Discord's very active now. we got about 170 people. Um, it's a lot of, lot of work with. So um, we're making some adjustments. Going to launch the bots. Going to launch the premium service. And we also are going to have some small caps coming up. I, I, it's mentioned to me that's one of the most popular things that my my audience is wanting that I am not currently doing. So I'm planning to implement that. Uh, my only issue really is I know that there's a lot of fake people out there that do small caps. They they just shill them to you. Like, here's a small cap, here's a small cap. And they, they're doing it to make money off you. And that's not how I want to operate. So uh, we will take a look at all that. And we will see what kind of resolution we can do. But anyway, those are the three things. All all nowhere stuff. Um, all my Discord stuff. Um, so let's just go ahead and continue. And we'll get started with all this. So first things first. You know, you can see my long here. This is not part of the discussion. But this is a long that I was operating in that I mentioned in my Discord. But I do want to I'm just put that on the screen visually <clears throat> and leave this on. As we talk about suckers rallies and as we talk about um, disbelief stages. And so my main thing is why do I believe that this is a, a disbelief rally? So there's a few things to discuss about this. I think in order to kind of explain, I think we need to talk about like all the stages in general, uh, just kind of briefly, but also focus on the nature of the current price action we have. As you guys know, I have really trying to focus on this video being about suckers rallies disbelief um, stages and the whole idea of that is that you won't understand that this is a disbelief stage the whole idea is your mind is going to psych yourself out to believe like okay this is <clears throat> this is just a a suckers rally right this is a price action that has no uh, concept of a real rally this is all fake we're all going to go down like this is you know, this is the end, right? And so that's the thing. So in order to have a sucker's rally, and we'll explain this more in the Bitcoin section, by definition is a rally that is just a, a fake out. That's really a fake out to the upside. It's as clear as day. We can look at other, you know, fancy articles, things like that. But when you, when it comes down to it, it's just a fake rally. And so, and so the idea is, so when I mention something on Twitter, like, oh, this is a sucker's rally, I'm actually being facetious. 
Um, I'm actually just joking about it in a very critical way because a lot of people are interpreting it this way. And so we can see that here. And so, um, you know, we had the run up from here. <clears throat> and so this was a fake out. And I mentioned this. I had a fake out video. Very good. Um, it's worth watching. I put it only on X. So um, it, you can only find it there now on YouTube. So we faked out here. I can understand this one. This one's very understandable to me. This wouldn't this wouldn't be what I call a disbelief stage necessarily. Uh, that that's more of like a retest, uh, and so I can understand that. And so when we got here, um, you know, I won't go into it because that's I did on another video for thirty minutes. But we also had the same thing here. We had another fake out. So you know, I I don't really have any um, I don't really have anything to say about that one. I I understand why people would have felt like that would have go down, but I also don't. And so I was kind of in the middle with that one. This one I don't really understand too much. And so, although I do understand how it could have been, we had the fake out again. So that's what I looked at. But, I'm, but I want to excuse the downside price action on this and look at the upside instead. And so we had several rallies here. And it's, what's really funny is a lot of this is like textbook, like bearish divergence, for example, right here. And so there was a lot of reasons to think that we could go down. But the problem is, let's go ahead and rewind this, and we go to, you know, 68,000. Nobody cared, nobody cared that we had a divergence at these levels. They did not care when we went to the two-week, and we pretty much had the same thing. And so this was a very obvious divergence, and nobody cared. Okay, I was there. <clears throat> I talked about it. I discussed the bearish divergence here. I discussed the bullish divergence here, and nobody talked about it here. But, and nobody talked about the bull div here, but everybody wanted to talk about this one. Now, why is that? Now, the thing is, is that both of them are, val all three of those are valid examples of, of incoming bearish price action or bullish price action, okay? It's an incoming change of direction, and so all three of those are valid. Now, what's the problem there? The problem is, when we were at 68,000, nobody wanted to I should say nobody because there were some people but in relative terms nobody really wanted to sell um, and that was that was textbook euphoria and so that's the price action that's the Wall Street cheat sheet that I want to talk about so I brought up here this isn't mine this is from priceactionninja.com um, just a site that I pulled up I'm not affiliated or anything so we had euphoria you know a stage of euphoria and you know basically saying hey we're all going to be rich and so some of this is going to be subjective and that's what i want to focus on a lot of this is going to be subjective your your chart is not going to necessarily look like this um and you know as we can see on here in the two week it doesn't really look like that we could probably combine these together and it looks very similar but <clears throat> this I, I do want to cover the stages a little bit and so we can kind of understand how this goes. And I think I'm just going to cover like basically the euphoria. I might cover the optimism part, but we'll just like, this is probably your optimism stage. This is kind of where, you know, a post, you know, I shouldn't say post COVID cause we were still in COVID, but, um, a, <clears throat> you know, a post lockdown, depending on where you may have been, or, you know, this is a worldwide audience. So this was after, you know, the pandemic had really kind of sustained itself. We had a rally and then right around here at this, I remember right around here was where Elon Musk and Tesla decided to add Bitcoin to their portfolio, which they have already gotten rid of. So that was kind of like your rally, right? It's like your belief stage, your thrill stage, and then you got to euphoria. So there's a few things going on here. One of the things is the idea of euphoria um, and, and this is going to be the main idea. <clears throat> the idea of euphoria is that you are at your peak. Okay. You are at your peak emotionally, um, is, or, or thrill seeking. You're getting the most endorphins into your body. It, this is almost an addiction realized like you, you are, you are at your top. Okay. Now there's a few different things, um, in regards to that. And one of those things is you don't, you're not typically, most people are not typically aware um, that they are in the euphoric stage or that they are in a euphoric state. And so that 
comes into question a lot of things. So when you when you have, you know, and I say all this because when you have a two week, this isn't actually a valid div because of the length. I think the three week had mentioned that. Um, yeah, the three week one was here, and so when you <clears throat> when you have a three week bearish div, when you're up four hundred percent for the past two years or whatever, like you're up to 65,000, 68,000, and you tell people, hey, this is the top, they're going to get pissed at you, okay? Now, why are they going to get pissed at you? They're going to be upset because you're interrupting their vibe. You're interrupting their flow. And I, I really just hate the word vibe, by the way. Like, when people say, hey, let's just have vibes, like, that's, what does that mean? Okay, maybe I'm turning into a boomer, okay? But, like, what does that mean? It means nothing, really. Like, it it means whatever that person that says the word vibes wants it to mean. Like, don't, don't get me started on the word vibe. It's just like, people say, hey, let's just have good vibes. Well, what does that mean? It's only what you think is good vibes, okay? But when I say something like, hey, this is euphoric stage, and I say, hey, the top is in, and you say, hey, stop interrupting my vibe, and then the very next candle is a nuke candle, guess what? You're going to be pissed off because you lost money. And then you're also going to be pissed off at me because you're somehow going to blame that on me even though I tried to warn you. Okay, And this is a hypothetical example, right? I was I was adamant that we should get out at that time. I was. Um, probably not as much as I wanted to be because I lacked a little bit of self... I lacked a little bit of confidence in telling people. But also because people were too... Uh, pious about their positioning like oh i just made a million dollars my my ape nft is worth seven million now yeah now it's worth ten thousand or whatever so <clears throat> the thing is people will blame others <clears throat> for something like this you know just just because that you mentioned it to them okay and so that's where you know there are some hidden things about when i say hey this is my last cycle a part of that is going to be because I'm, I probably will still be here, but I'll be silent or maybe just have a, a closed off private group or something because I'm just tired of the noise. I'm tired of people telling me that I'm wrong when I've been right. I'm tired of, and it doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong necessarily. Um, and, and people, and, and the thing is, um, you've got scammers that scam actively, like out in the open and it's like nobody seems to care okay you got people like nj and and all the trade people with the trader name um actively scam people and it's just like okay well they, but they were they were a good trader no they weren't they were dumping on you like that's the whole that's the whole point of it why do you think that they were so good and if they were so good why do they need to dump on you why do they need two hundred thousand dollars right now i understand two hundred thousand is not a lot of money or it is a lot of money relatively speak for most people that's that's a pretty good chunk of change i think we need to i think we need to stop having this mentality that 200 grand is not a lot of money because it is okay i went to a wedding friday and um we just got paired randomly with people right at a at a table <clears throat> and the guy next to me happens to be um some guy that um he's got a lot of money got a decent amount of money he inherited it and he's he bought he's buying a lot of finance stuff and so we talked bitcoin things like that but um we were talking about it, it's interesting because when you talk about like traditional finance people they're all like you know um you know five percent a year is really good <laughs> and like you know us crypto people laugh at that right and so that being said it's I understand why that's still a decent amount of money, okay? And and that's the thing. Like, people forget that 5% a year can actually help you. You just don't want it to. You, you think that that's too short of a time frame or whatever. And it's funny because the traditional finance people look at us and say, oh, 400% a year? Oh, yeah, that's that's a joke. That's a scam, okay? And I've, I've made 3,000% a year on some assets. And, and some of you probably have, too. And so that's that's the thing that I don't understand is like some of you guys just they you want the quick flip, you want the hundred X every day. And it's so silly because if you if you size up instead 
and reduce your exposure, reduce your leverage, you're probably going to make more. Okay, and you don't have to do that through gambling. Okay, I was just watching a video yesterday about um, casino tricks. And I don't gamble. I hate gambling. I hate it. I don't like it. I don't want nothing to do with it. I don't want to associate with Rollbit or anybody. Okay, but I do read up and research <clears throat> probability methods that casinos use. And there's quite a bit. There's a lot of algorithms they do. There's a lot of tricks they, they, they do. And you can reverse engineer aspects of casinos and use them for your trading. Now, um, the problem is a lot of people want to trade in the same way that they might gamble, and that's wrong. <clears throat> okay, I never use trading for gambling. I just look at the probability and statistic methods that you can utilize. And that's how you can actually beat the casino house is by using probabilities and statistics to gain algorithms, to gain edges. And the whole idea is to gain an edge, right? But the issue is the house will kick you out. Okay, and that's the whole that that was the whole issue of the the video that I watched is like yeah if you get too good, you will you will not be allowed to um, play at that casino again. And so anyway, I digress from that. It's, it's a really good discussion. Maybe that's another video because <clears throat> there's new algorithms I've learned and really good. The point is we're talking about euphoric stages, and the big key thing about a euphoric stage is that nobody realizes it's a euphoric stage. They're too high on their profits to care, okay? And then the very next week, they're going to lose it all, okay? And and this is an interesting one because we people were already euphoric here. We nuked pretty significantly. That's probably the biggest nuke to date, okay? And um, how big was that? That was like 40% in one one three week candle. So that was a pretty big candle. Three weeks is pretty long. But <clears throat> we recovered from this and everybody was like, Oh great, this is this is it. Like that was that was over. This is the real rally. But it's not. It was so obvious that that was fake. Okay, and that's something that I just don't really understand. So people didn't sell here. And so that's the euphoric stage, okay? That was that was um that was this one. Then you had complacency. And so this was probably your complacency stage. Like, all right, we dropped again. Now we're rallying again. And so we're going to go through that. And then we had the anxiety, denial, panic, and I, and capitulation. I so The thing is, is like I, I personally put anxiety, denial, panic, and capitulation all in one go since it happens so fast. And that's the thing. You can't have these four stages separated typically. They have to go really fast. And this, in my opinion, is is all of that okay and the funny <clears throat> so we have the anxiety and the denial and the panic and capitulation that's all from the get-go right there so that's kind of how i view it i'd probably view it somewhere like so <clears throat> and then your anger stage here at the bottom and then your depression stage here that's how i viewed it that's how i've always kind of viewed it i'll keep the prices up here as we're going down a little bit going into the meeting um the meeting is going to be in about 30 minutes so we'll keep an eye on that so that, that's one thing to consider, okay, is we have all that going on. If we go to the one day, I kind of want to zoom in and I'll just have to get rid of this for a second. So we also know that we had the FTX stuff. And so the FTX was the catalyst to get people to change their mindset <clears throat> from, hey, we can rally out of this to being like, all right, we can't rally out of this. And so FTX was the catalyst to change the entire market structure. And so your capitulation stage was basically here towards 30,000. Your anger stage um, was really right here. And the reason being is it, it, it did feel kind of an angry stage for one. Like I think a lot of people were angry that they were losing. Uh, you know, the, the money was lost here, but people were kind of angry. Like everything was kind of being a little more sketched, things like that. And so once this, you know, we had some drama here, but the FTX situation happened here. And so once that actually happened, like there was, there was not a lot of anger around. Okay. It was, it was very, people were very depressed. I know people that lost their entire net worth. Um, and I, and I, I don't think that they were smart by doing that. Um, it's not smart to put all your money on one exchange. So, <clears throat> and I'm not saying I haven't done it before. I'm just saying that I, 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 they, they know that that wasn't the best idea either. So, 
that shifted again from saying, hey, I'm not angry. I'm sad. Okay, so that's the thing. Like, I I only lost $1,500, <clears throat> um, fortunately, with uh, the whole scenario. And that was mainly because of Gemini Earn. I had money on Gemini, and I lost that. So, um, but <clears throat> there was a big shift between being angry and being sad, and that's kind of where we were at. So this, in my opinion, this whole structure was kind of like a depression stage. And so that's the thing. So that's kind of where we are now, in my opinion. So let's kind of go ahead and go up to the three-day, kind of get a better context. So now you have this structure, right? And so there's different interpretations. So some people say that this is the angry stage. I think most people understand that the angry stage has already happened somewhere around here. So I, I think 99% of people do believe that we have finished the angry stage. Um, the thing is, some people believe that we have not entered the depression phase yet. And some people believe that we do. I'm under the impression that we have already passed the depression phase or that we are in maybe the last parts of, like, we are getting ready to exit out of it. So in, so in other words, I think, you know, I think this whole structure could be depression. But I don't really think so, the way that this is structured. That's why I went to the suckers rally, the disbelief stage. I believe that we are in a disbelief stage. And so um, there are some reasons to believe that we are in a disbelief stage. But I understand why people think that we're in a depression stage. The The reason most people believe that we're in a depression stage, however, is the fact of just the market structure. That we had a lower low here and that we're, we need to go lower again. So as you can see here, so like, I have to, I have to re redo this. So like, you had two, basically two drops here. It's almost like a divergent type of mentality. And then you had somewhat of a higher, high, not quite. Again, this is subjective. And then you go down again. And so we had the two lower lows. A little bit of a higher high, which is relative to here. Okay, so not quite the higher high. So we, because we did not close above it. And we could see that like so. There's the high. And so we stayed below it. So I can understand, this looks textbook to me. The problem is, people are looking at the cheat sheet and saying, okay, it needs to look like this. Okay, that's the problem. What I mentioned earlier is that the chart does not need to look like the chart because it's subjective. And we know that based off of how this looked. This here does not look like this. Okay, unless you want to consider this thrill. I mean, I mean, you probably could, but you have to do a little bit of gymnastics to do that. So I can understand how people think that this is a depression stage forming. Um, however, I don't believe so. So if we, just to kind of put this in retrospect and to explain this, if we go into a depression stage, if we believe that this is just the beginning of it, we have a long way to go. Okay, so that would be like probably February. And and even longer. And so that that could tie in. That could tie into the having in May. So that's very possible. Um and so that that is a situation that we could analyze. And again, I'm I'm okay being wrong. So if this if this really is a sucker's rally. If this is not a disbelief stage, <clears throat> then that would be my second go-to, that this is finishing off the depression stage and that we're going to continue higher. So we'll see how that operates. Um, I have reasons to believe that that is not the case. However, my plan B is, okay, maybe it is a, a depression stage and we can operate like that. And if that is the case, then we can go back and backtrack that. I'm okay doing that. Because here's the thing, if, if this isn't a depression, I, there's, there's, there's more at risk right now for thinking this is a depression stage than if there is not. Because if this is a depression stage and you act like it is, then you're going to miss out. Okay. I'm, if this is a disbelief rally, 
and I long and it's depression instead and I get invalidated on a short, well, okay, then the next one will probably, I'll be right. And so that's the, that's the thing you need to, you need to plan ahead. <clears throat> and so if I'm even wrong on this go around, I won't be the next go. And so the idea, however, is that everybody thinks that they know what's going on and you need to come at it with the idea that you don't know what's going on. And I don't know. I'll be the first to admit, I don't know. But that's the thing. That's the definition of a disbelief rally. Nobody really understands that a disbelief rally is actually a disbelief stage because you have to, you have to have the mindset, okay, this isn't real. You know, it's going to go lower. And so that, that's the whole thing with, with the cheat sheet. It's like, all right, we're depressed. All right, we're going up. But yeah, like I've already lost, you know, all this stuff here. So it's going to be fake. Like it's pointless. I've, I've already seen this before. I've seen it again and again and again and again. And that's kind of what we have here. Like I've seen it again and again and again. Like why should it go up? Okay. And so we have a few different things going on with that. And so... There's a lot to go on the technical side. We still have a lot of ways to go. And I understand like on the three day, on the weekly chart, this doesn't necessarily look the best. Do I think that we're going to straight rally from here? No, I do not. And so we can get into that in the Bitcoin section. But that's just a general psychological idea behind suckers rallies and stages and thoughts like that. So um, I wanted to mention that. Um, and so now we're going to go into the technical analysis portion. I told you this would be a long video. We're going to go into BTC and talk about the actual definition of what a sucker's rally actually is and what a disbelief um, rally is as well. All right, let's go to the Bitcoin technical analysis. We talk about things on the weekly. So um, I'm glad you could go through the sucker's rally stuff with me. I'm going to keep going through it. So this, we're going to talk about Bitcoin analysis, talk about the weekly and the daily. And in addition to that, we're going to talk about the definition of what a sucker's rally actually is versus what a lot of people perceive it to be. So going on to the weekly, um, this is a lot of chicken scratch here. So maybe I'll um, change change the candle, uh, the chart really quick. So <clears throat> this was your closing candle, not the current one. Um, pretty, pretty nice, uh, pretty good engulfing candle, pretty good wick on the lows. So you got a few things going on here. Um, you know, let's kind of, maybe I can, okay. So this has, this is basically the same thing, but it doesn't have the current candle. So what we had here, so we closed above here, we closed above this entire region. So that's very significant. That's basically textbook bullish engulfing, right? But we also had a wick going on in here as well. <clears throat> so a lot of good things going on here. This is a very clean structure, a very good sign that we could rally from here. Um, now, that being said, it doesn't always happen. Here was another example of a bullish engulfing. But this was also a bullish order break. So that's also one reason that we retraced downward. Um, here's an inverse. Here was a, a bearish engulfing candle that ended up rallying instead. But, you know, that's... Those, that's on the bearish side. <clears throat> so overall, good sign. We had another, well, no, that was probably one. Here. Yeah, this was an engulfing candle here where we wicked down, tapped the lows, but we closed above. So that was basically your textbook low. That's kind of what I'm looking at with this. And so overall, I do think I do think there's a really good chance that the low is already in um, for not just this, but really for the entire market. I have very high doubts that we're gonna go below 16,000. I've got um, significant doubts that we'll go below 20. I think there's probably about a, only a 5% chance we'll go below 20 ever again. I think there's probably a 99.999% chance that we won't go below 15,000 ever again. Um, and so there's a few different things, however, that I wanna look at. First things first, the RSI is not above the 50 marker. And I, I would like that to be to see a long-term rally. Excuse me. Another thing is that we have a bearish Aaron consolidation. It's on the slim side, but it needs to recover. Now, one of these things that we need to understand is on the weekly charts, these tend to happen, you know, um, Aaron band behaves much more smooth on higher time frames, so we can we can expect more predictable results on the consolidation. So this actually needs to cross um, 
bearish <clears throat> in order for us to get a rally. It's a little confusing. It's worth another video, perhaps. Um, but you can typically, the trend, so you can see here, like we had a bullish rally here. But overall, if you start it from the bullish rally here and then to the other one, you didn't really get much. Only about 7%. So that's the thing. On a higher time frame, you almost... If, if you want short-term rallies, you almost want the opposite to happen. Anyway, long story short, um, it's worth another video. Can't explain it. So um, <clears throat> that's what we got going on with this one. And so um, if we look at it from the daily perspective, this is how this looks. We had a reclaim of this. We're, we still got to kind of hold it. And honestly, um, that was just arbitrary. This is where we kind of have to hold um, between this gap right here. And that's currently where we are holding. And we're doing okay. We're still doing two and a half for the day. So that's pretty decent. Um, and so that's what we have to look forward to. Now, um, another thing also, I should go back to it. I should just have that on the on the watch list. The other thing we have to look at is is the halving. So it was in, actually in April, end of April. So it wasn't in May, but we have that coming up as well. Should this should this dip and so the thing is with things like suckers rallies and you know disbelief stages and all that kind of crap is it's always expectations okay i expect price to go down i expect price to go up well why you are not in control of this chart okay and that's the thing and i'm learning to try to not to say the word expectation and so there's a difference between what you think price could do which is kind of an expectation. So I understand why people say the word. <clears throat> but the thing is, you can't make the charts do X, Y, Z. Okay, so it's really, it's it's very ignorant to say, we are getting 20,000, for example. Um, and and, and that, that's just a random thought. I'm not saying anybody's doing that. I, there are people, but uh, I'm not targeting anyone, okay? So, so the thing is, and, and I'm really not, I got nobody on my mind. The thing is, there's a difference between saying 20,000 will happen versus based off my calculations, 20,000 seems like a highly profitable idea. Much, lots of variations between the two of those statements. Okay, so that's what you kind of need to understand. So from what I seem to understand, I think we could stay within this range until the having, and so it's one of those things could we go lower by the time we get to march it's possible i think so i think it's probably more likely that we stay within this range between thirty six thousand and nineteen thousand. i don't think I, I have high doubts to think we will go below 20 but we might get a wick and it, it's possible and i need to i need to focus on what is possible okay i you need to you and me and everybody else you need to shut down your pride and focus on what could happen because your pride is probably getting in the way with you making money or helping you lose money okay so that's um that is something that you need to be mindful of so i do i think that we could stay below here or in within this range yes i absolutely think so and um your having could be one catalyst um, I'm not convinced that, you know, a lot of people think we're going to go to all time high this year. I, I have high doubts, but that's, I don't, I don't know. I don't personally think that that's possible. Um, that some people have brought good evidence to say that that could happen, but I, I just, I would like to see something first. Okay. If we can get to 40,000, okay, then we can talk about that. Um, but right now I don't think that's in the cards just yet. We would need to break this level right here of 36,000 um, before we start talking about bigger numbers. Just like I think that we, if you want to talk about 20,000, we need to break this weekly first. Okay. Uh, and that weekly would be at 24.3. Um, another thing I want to look at is the SMA 200. We are below that. Actually, no, it was the EMA. Sorry. So we are kind of in between. I'll get rid of the SMA. But we are hovering on this 200 EMA. And I've, I told people, I told people, I told people, watch the 200 EMA, okay? We do not, we do not close below it when we get above it. 
<clears throat> okay, you know, and so we went above and we retested twice already, and we are still above, and this isn't even including the current candle, okay? So are you convinced? And that, uh, that That's the thing I don't understand is like why, I, I don't understand it. Like why do people short when we are at support? I, I don't understand, okay? And so that plays into the sucker's rally disbelief stage. A definition of a sucker's rally is that we get a quick upward price action and we go back down. This wasn't a sucker's rally, okay? Because we've been here since March and we're still hovering and we're almost, we're already halfway back above the highs if you take the current candle that's not on the chart into perspective, which is there, okay? And so there's your 200. Um, it kind of plays into it. So the disbelief stage is the idea that everyone thinks that this is a sucker's rally. It's not a sucker's rally. So, so the idea is, is that people treat something that's not a sucker's rally as a sucker's rally. And that's exactly what we got here. Okay. People believe that we are going down and we are doing nothing but staying up or going up. Okay. That is disbelief at its core. And so eufor euphoria is actually a, a disbelief stage of of bullishness there's no way that this can be anything but bullish okay that's the definition of euphoria is just the inverse of a disbelief okay one of my very first articles i wrote you know with the within months of me starting in the crypto world is bitcoin bear euphoria um and that was that was talking about being in the depression stage because, and that was in 2017, 2008, I think 18, actually, 2018, maybe early 2019, where people were, we had a lot of bears back then, more than we do now. Um, and there was an aspect, it was fun to be a bear back then, I, I will say. Um, I was not a bear. Um, I didn't, I didn't leverage trade in 2018. But a lot of people did, a lot of bears did, a lot of people, you made a lot of money being a bear. And it was very easy to do so. Because we were just going straight down for a year straight, just like we did last year, you know. And so the thing was, um, that brought about a lot of bearish euphoria. And so you could take the charts and you can inverse them, right? Like depression for the bulls is euphoria for the bears. And euphoria for the bulls is depression for the bears. The thing is, it doesn't pay to be a long-term bear. That's the whole point. But you got this right now is like, like like euphoria the whole definition of euphoria was belief i believe that like i am rich and i believe that this is going to continue forever whereas disbelief is like no this isn't this isn't going to last at all and so that's why i believe that we are at a disbelief stage not many people believe that this is a sustained rally i strongly disagree although i understand their position i and i think it is crucial to understand an opposing position that is why i make the, the statements that I make, okay? It's not because I'm arrogant, although I can be. It's not because I'm prideful, although I can be. And you know, I'm not without my flaws, okay? Um, I'm not even saying that I'm the most humble. I, I want to be, um, but sometimes it doesn't come out that way. I can come out, my, my statements can be very rude sometimes. I understand that, even though I'm not trying to be rude. But the point is you need to understand both sides and come to a conclusion. And that's the thing that most people don't do is they'll make a statement. They won't cross-reference that with any opposing statements. And then they'll, they'll, therefore, they come out of that with a statement of arrogance instead of research. Okay, so it's different if you can look at the opposing argument and make a conclusion. So that's, that's kind of what I see here. I've looked at both sides. I understand both sides. And I can see how both sides could be right, but ultimately only one can be right. And so based off of this, I think the disbelief is rampant. You got people arguing back and forth. Um, there's a reason fintech is successful, by the way. It, it, you know, partly it is because of its function, but I, to be honest, like it's not as good as people think it is. Um, it, does it need work? Yes. And I think people really understand that. But you are one reason I haven't promoted it as much is because it's it's a glorified telegram 
paid group, basically. You have to pay to even be in the channel. Like, that's the definition of a paid telegram. Okay, and that's the thing. Like, people pay... People are paying $3,000, $5,000 even for some of these quote-unquote paid groups um, to just talk in a chat room together. Like, it, like okay, it's not even a Discord because you can't even have separate channels. you got to have different ones, right? So, I don't know. I don't get it. I really don't. Um, but I've been trying to use it. But the whole point, anyway, the whole point is... I don't think it would be as successful if this was a bull market um, because people are bored. People want to do something. People are trying to make ways to make money. And that's the thing. Everybody that I see that's trying to make money off there has had to invest a lot. Okay. Yes, you might make $50,000 off trading fees and an airdrop that we don't even know exists technically. But the thing is you've had to put $100,000 in. Okay. That's not a good, that's not a good return. Imagine trying to trade $100,000 instead and doubling your money in a week from price action like this. And that's the thing. That's why I don't pay attention to things like Frentech as much. Because the real stuff is happening right now and everybody has missed it because they believe this is a disbelief stage. So that's that's what I got to do with this, um, with the Bitcoin section. And so I'll move on from this. The thing is, here's the current daily candle. This is the positioning that I have right now. I still believe that we are going to go up, but we are at a, somewhat of a key local resistance. Um, but I still believe that this could go um, up as well. The hearing is going to be in 10 minutes, so I'm going to observe it while, um, while I'm operating this. And so if we do have a, short, uh, a sharp fluctuation, I'll discuss it and I'll in, in the channel. But I'm going to go ahead and go to Ethereum now and continue with this all right now we're going on to ethereum um it is during now now the binance hearing is going on but it seems like there's no effect so we're just going to continue so anyway going here to the one week chart <clears throat> um one thing that we can see is so we've, we've had some difficulty with this one so from a trading perspective had the adam and eve we had it almost a year ago um Looking in that, we had the deviation retest and so so on and so forth. But we had <clears throat> a drop down here. We had a pretty large considerable drop. We actually wicked to a new low, but we recovered. We did not recover significantly enough, though, to qualify for a bullish engulfing. We're still below 200 EMA resistance. And I do want to mention that when I talk about 200 EMA resistance, I talk about it much differently from Bitcoin than I do from Ethereum. Ethereum does not have a history of respecting the 200 EMA like Bitcoin does. So we need to keep that in perspective. <clears throat> Another thing I see also is, let's go ahead and get rid of that 200 EMA for for this chart. We had a long trend line that seems to be being respected. This is something that I mentioned in my Nowhere Discord. <clears throat> Again, if you want anything, if you want any like time um, sensitive, analysis go to my nowhere discord i mention a video every day from sunday through thursday got five videos in there um, we have not recovered the rsi <clears throat> bullish aaron consolidation pretty wide so i think that we can continue here we had we had um, a tightening into an expansion so that means we could kind of go more towards the upside that being said it's just monday <clears throat> and so um, we have some you know we have a lot of price action that still needs to be done. I'm not sold on Ethereum as much as I am other coins. I think there's much more higher R to R for other coins than Ethereum right now. Going on to the daily, we have recovered. This is a zone that I'm interested in. We have broken that, but the daily is not closed yet. We still have about seven hours to go. And so I think that we need to close above this in order to have a long for Ethereum. So... We can see with Ethereum that we are trying to recover here. We had that recovery fake out on Bitcoin, but we have not had that yet on Ethereum. And so, and this brings up a good discussion with suckers rallies and disbelief stages. So like what, what makes a suckers rally an actual suckers rally? What makes, what, what confirms the disbelief stage? What gets us out of it? And I, and I think those are good questions. And overall, I think there's two very good easy answers for that. In order for a sucker's rally to actually be a sucker's rally, 
you need to have confirmation to the downside. When when the chart says, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a sucker's rally, they're not saying that this was a confirmed sucker's rally. They're saying like, hey, this, this is a perceived sucker's rally. And so, again, this is subjective, but this could be, this could be an actual confirmation of a sucker's rally, but they treat it as such. Okay, so whether or not it gets confirmed as one, they treat it as one. So the, the whole idea of disbelief <clears throat> is that someone believes something opposite to what they are seeing, despite the fact that they cannot confirm it, right? Um, because if they have, let's say, a million dollars in their bank account, for example, and they say, well, I don't believe this, well, why not? Okay, so there's a certain aspect of, of belief there, like, why wouldn't you believe something that's in front of your face? And now the reason they say, I don't believe this is a million dollars, is because it's just not realistic for them. And so they will come to realize that they have to change the frame of reference for that. And so that's one of the things where the sucker's rally comes into play is the disbelief stage for them is so strong that they <clears throat> they just don't believe it. And so they have to default to whatever whatever is the closest thing that they do believe, which is a sucker's rally. And so the main difference between the sucker's rally and a disbelief stage is that um, a sucker's rally has to confirm to be... A sucker's rally is basically a, a longer time frame deviation. That's all it that is. So they they think that that's going to happen. They think that, hey, this is... a this is a rally. This is this is one, but this is a fake rally. This is a blow off top. This is a sucker's rally. This is the biggest bull trap you've ever seen, for example. <clears throat> you know, that's been joked around so much because somebody had mentioned that and that person's either going to be the smartest person in the markets or the dumbest person in the markets. And I don't I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying like that's a prime example of someone focusing on their belief structure instead of a technical analysis structure. And so the opposite can be said for disbelief. What makes a disbelief stage disbelief stage? And it's just the fact that you just don't believe that what you're seeing. And so that's the opposite, you know. Um, Sucker's rally is an anticipation that something's going to go to the downside, where a disbelief is just something that you, you don't believe what the current thing is happening. <clears throat> so slight difference, but that's basically the gist of it um, for that one. And so that's kind of how I think people need to understand how the Wall Street cheat sheet really works in this regard. Um, they work for a reason. And so it's one of these things you can't focus on yourself. Just because you are angry does not mean that we are in the anger stage. OK, <clears throat> just because you are depressed, you know, and some people say that they're always depressed does not mean that they're in the depression stage. If you do you will probably always stay in that stage. If you're always angry and depressed, there's a good chance that your price, your portfolio reflects this price action. If you're constantly angry and you're constantly depressed, <clears throat> your, your portfolio probably looks sideways. <clears throat> okay, if you are, if you're optimistic or you're euphoric, your price action for your portfolio probably looks like that. And so that's the thing. Um, it does reflect your personal portfolio, perhaps. But you got to understand just because you are panicking, for example, or you're in a disbelief doesn't mean the market is. Okay, and so that's a lot of things. But the, the point is, if a lot of people are in this stage, chances are that's, that's the get go, you need to understand that this is a psychology of a market cycle. And the market cycle is a combination of everybody that has an interest or lack of interest in the market at hand. Okay, so that's something you got to go with. Um, it's not based off of you. It's not based off of your small crypto Twitter crowd. Um, although we do have a larger influence than most people think. Um, the thing is, it's over entire market structure. And you need to perceive it that way, right? <clears throat> you need to look at that and cross-reference that with what you feel or how the market is reacting. So that's that's that. And that was with Ethereum. We're going to go on to Solana. We can see we're kind of going below here. We kind of getting a little bit of a dip. Not not too much, but one that I was expecting around this time, which tend to be the case around this time of day. So let's go ahead and go to Solana, and we'll just continue going. 
All right, so we got Solana on the one week chart. This is the Binance chart, but um, I'm gonna switch to KuCoin here in a second because I got some extra notes for that one. And so um, this is one of these things where I think, so the, the, the topic at hand with Solana would be like how um, disbelief stages work. And I think we've already covered that. So I think we'll just do the analysis for that <clears throat> and then we'll move on um, into the final stage with Binance. So with this, very complicated structure here. So for the weekly, again, we had a retest at a trend line that's very similar to Ethereum in that regard. And so, <clears throat> again, we had a bounce, did not have the engulfing. So very similar. It's one of these things why I, I don't, I still, after seven years, do not understand why people don't focus on basic things like trend lines, basic things like RSI, basic things like EMAs. They work. I'm telling you, they work. Okay. This is why. I'm able to analyze very basic things like this. This is why I just posted the Adam chart where it's up 13%. You know, it's up six and a half percent for the day based off of very basic things like that, <clears throat> like trend line breakouts. They're, they're very profitable anyway. So we had, <clears throat> excuse me, we had this weekly, um, we had this weekly pattern. We had the lows touched down at the trend line. We broke above it, not quite engulfing but it's pretty good. We already have a, a good rally, but again, this is the first day. I always mention this for observations. These reactions are always the first day. They may not be what they seem. No recovery on 50 RSI just yet. Um, Aaron is still bearish on a bearish wedge, but this is what I'm trying to get frame of reference. Like these need to cross bullish on the weekly and most of these have not. So when they cross, when the Aaron crosses on the weekly, it's going to be very substantial. Okay. Um, that's something that we need to keep in mind because Aaron helps determine the high time frame momentum for that. Um, but we are getting close. Another thing is the RSI on the 50 reclaim. Once we get that, that will be pretty significant as well for high time frames. So one thing we can see about that is like we've only had like one one break above the 50, but we had one right here, and this lasted for a long time. Like this this basically started at July um, and went to January. It's like almost six months. So roughly six months. So that's something to keep in mind. And so it's one of these things like, yeah, we could do another six week, whatever, where half of it goes down, but you never know when it's going to be this. And that's the thing. This, a break of 50 has to happen before we get a rally. It has to. There's no way that we stay below 50 and get a rally of this size. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the probability of that occurring and capitalizing on that probability instead of saying, hey, I'm going to trade this whenever it looks good. Don't ever trade because things look good. Trade because they are good. You know, trade because of the probability favors that direction. And so that's why I, I am a little bit different of a trader than most people. I focus much more on probabilities of the analysis to occur, not necessarily what I think will happen or what it looks like or yada, yada, yada. So. That's something that I keep in mind. <clears throat> For this weekly structure, we need to reclaim above this line right here. Um, and so that's basically about 2023 or 2020, 2029, I'm sorry, or 2030, I should say. That's where I come up with a three. I was going to round up. So if we can get to 2030, I think that's a good opportunity to long. I don't think that this is a shortable op opportunity. I think it's pointless to short right here. Um, I would probably wait for a long to get to that 2030, even 2040 and get that hold in there. So it's going pretty good for the day one week or, or 5% for the, for, uh, today. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to scroll over to the KuCoin, go to the daily. And so this is one thing I looked at. We had the fake out here with the wedge and I mentioned in my discord again, if you're not in there, please do so. Um, we had a breakdown and so. We had a breakdown of the trend line, which is this longer red line. In fact, I'll go ahead and turn it a different color. I'll turn it to purple. So actually that's not good either. So we'll just turn it to yellow. So when we had the breakdown of the yellow um, and we broke above it, that was a sign that we would get a fake out. Even though that we were within the wedge, I knew that that was a fake out. So I longed that, okay? And so that was one, one thing to keep in mind that once you get a fake out, and again, I mentioned this in nowhere, I mentioned this in observations, the fake outs are deviations. And when you get deviations, those hold very strongly. And that's why we're getting the reaction that we're getting. Okay, we are getting a little bit of a downward reaction right now. 
but relative to the past week, we've been doing pretty good. And so I, I actually bought an extra bag roughly, probably around here, probably 18. So I'm doing pretty good. Breaking above this, we, if we hold above this, this is good for a daily time frame. I want to be above this 2035 range or 2030 range for the weekly structure. So that plays into it. Overall, I think this looks great. I really do. Um, I'm not convinced that we're going to go down to the 1600 or 1640 range. <clears throat> um, we're looking for the uh, confirmation of the 50 RSI. Bullish consolidation looks pretty good. Overall, I like what I see a lot. All right, so now um, I'm going to go to Binance. And then cover the last part of the, the Suckers Rally thing and we'll continue. All right, going to Binance on the weekly. Um, so one of the things here we can see is we, we did have a divergence. This was not on the weekly, however. It was on the daily. I think it's this structure right here. So one thing that we can see, we're not getting the rally that we wanted. We did get one earlier towards the end of last week, so yesterday basically. That's one thing to keep in mind. One thing that I noticed is that we got an early rally with Binance versus other coins. And it was a very interesting... Um, uh, price action with that so overall nothing conclusive i know that bitcoin's or binance is probably going to be weaker compared to other coins just because of all the news i think it's going to affect them much more personally and obviously that makes perfect sense right versus the other ones <clears throat> so we'll see how this goes I'm, i i think that we are topped out for the day market wise by the way and so that's something to keep in mind i'm um, going on to the one day four hour looks interesting one day, so we kind of have that blow off top. That's not really what you want to see um, for buying Bitcoin or buying Binance. And so I think it's probably worth keeping out for now. One thing that I would want to see is probably a hold of 220. I think I've mentioned that before, but really just a hold of 230. Understanding Bitcoin or Binance's potential volatility and downside potential, I think holding 230 would be much more confident. Um, I'm not a fan of Binance in general, Binance Chain. Um, I think it's something to avoid for the time being, just like I avoided um, XRP for the time being. And so with that, um, the, the topic with Binance would be com combating the expectations. So it's one of these things with Binance, it's easy to see what can we expect with them and their hearing. Like, could we expect something bearish? A lot of people are by default. And that was... That was really my whole problem about the FOMC stuff, all the CPI stuff. People take that way too seriously um, because they they think something's bad is going to happen because they expect the anticipation of something bad to happen causes something bad to happen. And so they, they fulfill their own issues with that. Now you can see we're going down a little bit, kind of what I was, um, kind of something I had on my mind. So, um you have to combat those, okay? You, you can't just say, well, I think price is going to go down because of X, Y, Z. The problem is not because of the hearings. It's not because of the FOMCs. It's because of what you expect to happen, okay? And so that was my argument last year. Everybody wants to find a reason to for things to go down or because they did go down. And so when price action goes down, they try to find out, well, I, I need an excuse, for why this happened, because I don't want to talk about how bad of a trader I was or why I didn't capitalize on a certain move or whatever. Okay, it's like they, people, people need some sort of confirmation um, or comfort over something they did, but they need it from an external source. Okay, and so nothing necessarily wrong with that at times. That's, you know, it just depends on the context in real life. But as far as trading goes, um, that's not really good, like in a long term health wise. So, but when it, but when it comes to disbelief stages and suckers rallies, you need to combat your expectations. Okay, and so the hard thing is with a bear market, you're going to always expect like like you you develop a PTSD. Okay, and that's something that I've developed over the last bear market. So I get it. I really do get it. But you got to kind of break yourself out of it you got to train yourself to get out of that right so so as far as like combating that you need to understand like don't expect things to always fail um sometimes they they go price will go up longer or will go down longer than you think 
And so that's the tough thing about crypto markets is that you you can't have expectations. Um, that's that's the hard that's the biggest con about crypto markets is that your expectations should just be eliminated. You should not expect to have a good healthy sleep schedule sometimes, because you know we had a big down move like two weeks ago on a Saturday night. For me, it was Saturday. It was almost midnight on Saturday, and so I got to deal with it. I think it was last week. <clears throat> So you got to kind of just deal with that, right? Um, another thing is for, for disbelief stages, you can't just expect things to not rally. Um, even, if, even, if, even if things have failed to go your way 70 times or 100 times, you just need to understand that the next time can be different. And not in the same way as we say, but this time it's different. Um, the thing is, you kind of got to get out of a mindset of, repetition as far as well we've had a down move for a year now so i'm going to expect everything to be a down move that should not be your interpretation you should find out how things it, it's okay to to think that way but you also got to understand like why do things turn around so for example the low that we currently have on on bitcoin you know not not right now but right here so like sixteen thousand. why why was that the low can we reverse engineer that so that we can also reverse engineer our expectations? Something that happened, we had several divergences. Here's one on the daily. We had one on the two week. Um, there's also like capitulation based events, swan, swan events. And, and that's the thing. Swan, black swan events generally recover faster than you think. Not only that, they don't retest. And that's the thing that people don't understand. People don't realize that black swan events don't get retested. Um, I, can't, I can't think of one that actually has. Whether it's COVID, whether it's FTX, um, whether it's um, uh, the housing market, they don't get retested from, from what I've seen. I, I would love to be proven otherwise because I would like to take advantage of that retest to make more money. But the thing is, I don't. In my evidence, I don't see them get retested. So you have to subvert your expectations. There are very smart people in the space that thought that we would retest back to um, COVID levels, back to 3,000. And I'm just like, how how are you this smart? But you can't, you know, whatever. Um, so, but the thing is, combat your expectations because you never know what's going to happen. So, and... Anyway, we are seeing a little bit of a down move right now. Not significant for the most part. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, actually, that's a pretty decent one on the daily, though. So anyway, I am going to end the video. Um, anticipation of what could happen here pretty soon. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you next time.